Well, don't stand out in the cold. Come on in. Show's about ready to start. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot. And this is the last day of July. This is Wednesday the 31st. Which means I've got my live streaming event tomorrow. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my lovely co-host, Taylor, we go on for about an hour, hour and a half, actually, taking requests from viewers like you. We're looking at stocks that you want us to look at. You got a hot ticker you want to share? Drop it in the comment box. I'll look at the information. Taylor will go over the charts, and we'll give you our two opinions, whatever that's worth to you. Now, I do go by first come, first served, and when I put up the announcement of this video around lunchtime, people start dropping their tickers then. So by the time 4 o'clock rolls around, I usually have all the tickers I can look at. But what I'm doing now is saving two spots for during the show. So if you drop your ticker during the show, we are going to look at two of those tickers. And we're probably going to look at the ones that have the hottest charts. So keep that in mind. That's 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, Thursdays. So what I like to do on this show is just to share some of my own personal due diligence with you on hot penny stocks. I normally do this by looking at the charts, find a chart that's got heat, match it up to some hot news, and voila, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. Well, this week, I have had more than a couple requests to look at a particular stock. This one, Hiru Corporation, ticker H-I-R-U. Hiru, I'm fine, how are you? <laughs> Now the chart is pretty hot. She's been climbing for the last month. She started at about triple zero seven. Right now we are at double zero three. We're up about 800% since she started running. But a week ago we hit a high of double zero five. So we were over a thousand percent runs. There is a lot going on with this company, which we discovered in last week's live stream. Somebody brought this up then and we took a look at it and I was surprised to see how much was going on with this stock. And it isn't really apparent. In a nutshell, and we're going to cover this, the company has canceled a billion shares. They are involved in three mergers. They are canceling a deal. They are getting out of the water business, which is what most people know this company for. And there are imminent dividends. Were you aware of all of that? I didn't think so. That's why I'm here <laughs> to bring this information to you. So Hyru, she finished today at 0033. She fell a lot today. Yowzy, almost 20%. Now she's on the OTC, the bottom tier. We call this pink. Pink is the riskiest tier on the OTC because you don't get validated information down here. You don't get a lot of filings. The financials are just disclosures. They're just tallies of numbers. There's no CPA looking at them. News press are what people normally go by with pinks, but I'll tell you right now, folks, don't trust the news press. Take them all with a grain of salt. Get into a stock and get out with pinks. I have lost a lot of money taking the word of news presses with pinks. The only validated information you normally get with the pink are these two green ticks right here. So I'm always harping to you. Look for these two green ticks, a verified profile and a verified transfer agent. Now these are verified by an unbiased third party, the otcmarkets.com website. This is their business. They're actually on the OTC market. You could invest in them if you wanted to. And one of their things is to verify these companies. So we've got that taken care of. And that's pretty much the best you get with the pink. So what is Hyru about? Well, I'm gonna bypass this description and I'm gonna dive into this one over here which comes out of their most recent news press. Now, there is a lot going on and the problem is, is it's not being talked about openly. It's not like it's in news presses. Some of this is in the news presses, some of it's in filings, some of it's on their website. I mean, you really gotta jump around if you wanna get all this information. They tell us here that Hyru is a holdings company. They hold interest in three operating enterprises, mining businesses in Africa, gold trading and processing in Dubai, and freight and warehouse services in Florida and California. The company also has a code share type of agreement to create new established warehouses in America and in Canada. They say they're going to have 25 FBA capabilities. Now, I wasn't sure what FBA stood for. 
I mean, actually, <laughs> what popped to mind was uh, fulfilled by Amazon, fulfillment by Amazon. Well, I knew it couldn't be that. So I did a search on Google trying to see what FBA means in the business world. There was no other definition. Fulfilled by Amazon is the only definition out there. Well, it really didn't make sense until I saw other information about Amazon. So I think that's exactly what they're talking about. Building warehouses in Canada and America that have products that are going to be sold through Amazon. And this is where they'll be shipped from. Now, the first thing you need to know is that they have had management change. We do have news talking about that. They have changed their CEO, the CFO, and the chairman. The CEO has now become in charge of the mining operations in Africa, if I'm reading that correctly. Now, the reason I bring this up is because the new management has new control, as you're going to see. There has been a change of control here. They tell us, so as not to disturb the above-named operating entities, as a result of the new management and the change in control, it has been decided by the new board and the new management that they will review these operating companies and shortly establish if they fit the company's narrative, vision, and goals. The short 30 to 45 day evaluation period will allow the new management to review the financial needs of each entity and what it will take for them to reach full throttle mode. So we're in a state of flux right now. We have got things going on. Things are going to be eliminated here. The water company is going, which we're going to talk about. They've got 30 to 45 days to look at these operating enterprises and see if they fit their requirements. And if they do, what they can do to, in their words, get them into full throttle mode. Now, as I said, the company's got three mergers going on right now. But you got to bounce around to get all that information. The first one I found is in their most recent financial. But before we jump into that, they tell us where those billion shares came from. It looks like the company canceled a deal they got into some time ago. They were going to acquire ALGM Holdings and gave them a billion shares. Well, they say the shares have been returned, canceled, and put back into the treasury. There's no more information here about it, so one can only presume this deal is dead and canceled. They then go on to tell us about the first merger, the Quaytar merger. The preferred shareholder entered into a binding letter of intent with Qatar Group to essentially sell 100% control block of his preferred shares. He had the controlling interest in the company. He's now sold that off to Qatar. There's your change of control. Qatar Group owns a large mine in Australia. They say that the Qatar merger is going to close Q3 of this year, third quarter. That's where we're at right now. Now, they say there is one condition before this deal can happen. The company has to eliminate all of their debt. Now, I don't know what sort of debt they got, but they know how they're going to do it. They tell us down here that Qatar is not going to acquire clearvota.com or the encumbered Hyru water packing equipment. That's what most people know this company for is their water. They're getting out of it 100%. They tell us here it is anticipated that these assets, once sold or spun out, will be dividend out. So they're getting rid of them one way or another. Could sell them all for cash, could actually get creative and put these assets together and spin them out onto the NASDAQ. Either way, we're going to get paid. We'll get dividends. They also have other assets that may come into play, like Liberia Mining. Again, if they have to sell them, we will get dividends in them. So that's your first merger right here. Qatar Group, they have the mine in Australia. The second merger I found over here at their website. Now, this is the main page. There's nothing else to look at. You got two links here. You can either choose to go into the logistics side or the mining side. Now, there is a lot of information over here for the mining side, and we're not going to get into any of it. Right here, gold mining, this is a presentation about all that's going on in Africa. And there is a lot of information here. They've also got information for their Australia project. So if you're interested in the mining side of it, there's a lot of information here. We're not going to dive into all of that. However, this other one over here 
as soon as you jump into it, immediately they tell you of a merger, but they don't tell you who it's with. They tease us. Hyru Corporation signs a letter of intent with a revenue generating e-commerce retailer and distributor. The merging company began in 2017 on Amazon.com as a third party merchant focusing on selling discounted home improvement products, including fixtures, tools, and other home and garden items. Today, the company is a distributor for many of the nation's largest brands in lighting, plumbing fixtures, and large appliances. Freight and warehouse services, that's what we offer, warehousing and distribution. By executing the pick and pack on site, we offer a more efficient turnaround with built-in distribution and total flexibility end to end. That sounds like fulfilled by Amazon. You just go around and pick up all the stuff in this warehouse, put it in a box and mail it from there. They tell us down here, the merging company recently opened its first retail showroom in Sarasota, Florida. As their reputation is further established among consumers and professionals, more showrooms will be opened up throughout Florida and California where the business currently maintains its operations nationwide. So we've got a big company here that is growing from a small company, now dealing with the nation's largest brands, even selling large appliances. We have no idea who they are. That's our second merger. Third merger comes out of a piece of news that we got April 10th. Now this is kind of funny the way they word this. The company proudly announces its launch and entrance into a groundbreaking project closely linked to, I'm not quite sure what that means, but it's linked to a merger and acquisition of a prominent gold mine in West Africa. This initiative marks a significant strategic move for the company as it aims to forge partnerships with central banks and key stakeholders in Africa to facilitate the procurement of gold. In alignment with that, they are also setting up a regional office in Dubai as a gold trader for their own mine projects. The mines that are now being displayed on their new website are JV type projects each in various stages. As I said, lots of information over there. In addition to the above, the other primary objective of the Dubai Endeavor is to secure gold from various central banks and verified sellers across the African continent, aligning seamlessly with our overarching goal of achieving profitability resale in the vibrant gold market of Dubai. Now they give us a projection here. It's a pretty decent one. The company's current capacity capabilities range from one and a half to $2 million per week in gold transactions, which would come out to something like, uh, what is that? 16 to $24 million a quarter, something like that, just for this. Now we have pretty much covered all of the news here. The company introduces a new mining team, COO. They move their management around, brought in new management, which is making decisions. We got a 30 to 45 day period that they are gonna weigh things up. Company launches the new mining division website. The company has the Dubai expansion gold processing started. They have had 1 billion shares returned and they appoint Vlad Duba as Interim CEO which is a temporary position. They could be made permanent, but right now it's temporary. So we've got a lot going on right now. We've had a lot of shares brought back, a billion of them. We got three mergers, one with Katar, which is the Australian mining project. We've got the unnamed one, which is selling plumbing and uh, electrical fixtures and appliances. And then we've got the third one. Oh, I can't remember their name. <laughs> So we've got three mergers that are going on right now, one that has been canceled. All of this is happening right now. The company is in a state of flux and the chart's been hot for a month. She has been climbing with some bouncing, but she is in a very strong trend. So let's take a look at what the relative volume was for the company today. She's up just a little less than double, almost 100% increase jumping from about 89 million shares a day over the last 30 days to just over 151 million today. So she's definitely catching attention. Share structure for the company. 
It's high. You knew it would be. I forewarned you. Even after taking away a billion shares, we still have about 2.7 billion shares outstanding. And the worst part is the insiders only own about 8 million shares. Really? At that price, shouldn't they be loading up? I always wonder about stuff like that. Which means we basically get all the shares. We got over 2.6 billion shares. Which means we have to seriously worry about this company doing a reverse stock split. That's a lot of shares. They're getting popular and they're approaching a penny. That's normally when we see reverse stock splits. And I don't know if this company's already had a shareholder meeting and approved one. There could be one sitting in the lurches just waiting to happen. You need to do some research on that. The quickest and easiest way is just to go to Google. Put in the company's name, their ticker, maybe put in a shareholder meeting, vote, consolidation, and split and see what you come up with. Market cap for the company currently is about 11 million. Financials, is this company making any money? Hey, they are. And they're making a profit. Look at that. So it's been up and down for them. Back in 2021, they came in at $1.2 million. We got to add three zeros to any of these numbers down here. 2022, they were way up. $6 million really jumped up. And they did pull back some down to 3.8 million, but that's a heck of a lot further than they were in 2021. And they're making some good profits. No matter how much revenues they're making, they're bringing in strong profit. Looks to be about 40%. That's a good profit margin. Quarterly reports, no clue why this one is missing. Going back a year, what the heck is that? Look at that, 7.7 .7 million in a quarter? Wow. Wow, that was just back in June uh, of last year. Why didn't that show up in the annuals? Right? Come on now. They, they say the end of 2023, December, it was 3.8 million. Where we see here in June, they had 7.7 .7 million. Then another million here in September. Hmm, interesting. Looking at current, wow. Wow. First quarter for 2024, we were at 3.1 million. They dropped all the way down to under a half a million here in June's quarter. That's pretty rough, dropping from 1.2 million profit to just under $200,000. Take a look at that balance sheet. See if anything is clearer over here. All right, remembering those three zeros, our cash and cash equivalents, which I like to think of as the bank. We got about 1.6 million there. Total assets for the company is about 10.5 million. Liabilities is less, about 7.7 .7 million. So we are holding stockholder equity in this company, 2.8 million, just shy of 3 million. So we do have revenues coming in. We are making profit. We do have stockholder equity. There's way too many shares. <laughs> Disclosures for the company. All right, we've got 18K here. Um, this 8K has to do with a stock purchase agreement. There's not a lot of information here. Now, there's a lot of information here about their management change. They go through each and every position here. If you want to read what they're going to be doing, what they were doing, all that good stuff. But what caught my attention up here was the board accept, accepts the stock purchase agreement by and between Vaja Vizek and Jacques Arun for 5 million Class A preferred shares. Now that's a lot of shares, but they don't give us a price here. I'm not quite sure what it's all about, but 5 million shares did move behind the scenes. Maybe another part of the change of control. A lot of shares moved. So that is what is going on with the company. She has got lots of things happening, three different mergers. I don't know if any of them have actually closed yet. I haven't seen any filings that say any of them have closed. It looks like one deal is out of the picture. We got our billion shares back and uh, the chart's hot. What else can we say? So let's go take a look at that chart and see if we can expect some more growth out of it. All righty then. Let's do some charting on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. We're going to take a look at ticker HIRU, Hiru Corporation. Now, I've got it opened up to a six-month, four-hour view, but that ain't going to cut it. It ain't going to work. 
We need some supports and resistances. You can't get them when there's no prices above your price. So let's kick this back to a year. Yeah, we might be able to snag one or two out of this, but I think we can do better. Let's go back three years. Yes, we can work with this. Now, this is a three-year, one-week chart. That means that every bar represents an entire week of trading. Kind of tough to get your SNRs, your supports and resistances, off of a weekly chart, but we're going to do our best here. So, we can see the obvious one right there. That is at 0014. Everything was sitting on that for a very long time. We've got another one about this area, 0044, 0043. And I see a high one somewhere in that region of 0076. Our high three years ago was one and a half cents. And our low just hit a little while ago of 0003. Let's come on back down to our six month, four hour view. Now, as you can see by that three-year chart, she's been in a downtrend for a real long time. Here's our 200-day SMA falling. Came down to that low bubble of 0003. She bounced off of that. She got through her 200, which she hasn't been through in a long time, but that was about it. She came back down under the 200, and she's been under there for many a months with the 200 still falling. Now, it was on July 5th. She decided to bounce. We had a burst of volume come in and that started the climb. We were here at 0004 and on the 23rd, we hit 0051. That is over a thousand percent run in three weeks. Breaking through two of our strong resistances, coming back down to the nine day, dipping a little bit underneath it, coming back up and tapping that strong resistance and falling back down. Now, she's been falling a lot today, and that is hurting our oscillators. All of our oscillators are pushing down, except, believe it or not, our RSI is climbing, which means when we get down to the lower time frame charts, we're probably going to see the last few bars are actually going up. Speaking of going up, every single SMA is climbing right now, except for the nine day. So this chart is actually looking pretty good. She has a little weakness in it just because of today, but overall, that's a pretty strong chart. Let's come on down to our 20 day, one hour view. So there's that low bubble, triple zero four, starting to climb. She got over that first resistance, laid on that for a full day, pushed up to our next resistance, broke it, came back down, bounced off of our 50, started to climb again, tapped her head, came down. She has fallen hard here. I'm sure she's probably bouncing off of another SMA on another chart. And she is coming up right now. Now, a couple of these SMAs don't look good. Our 20 and our 50 are kind of hanging on the edge right now. Our nine day is underneath it. Our oscillators, what are they saying? They say she's still kind of pushing down right now. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, is pushing down as well as our MACD. But our RSI is level right there. Level because we got a couple of green bars that are not falling anymore. Let's come on down to that five day, five minute. Wow, wow, that is all over the place. So here she is on top of that strong resistance. She was a support when she was on top of it, 004. Coming down to this low of 0025, really ripped off of this, getting back on top of her 200, tapping onto that strong resistance, falling really hard again, down to 0027, and here she goes climbing. Now, all of our SMAs look like she is about ready to jump. Everything is just at that cusp where it's turning around and about ready to climb. She is on top of all of that underneath our 200. Each time she does this, she does spike up towards it very quick. I'd be looking for a spike right now. Our oscillators are still a little tempted. I'm not seeing the strength I want to see, but overall, this company's been catching a lot of attention. We've got three mergers. None of them have closed as far as I can see. Wouldn't that be catalyst? Each one of them closing? I would think so. So there are things to be considering about this company. Not to mention, we have got that 30 to 45 day window when the new management is considering what they're going to do. And who knows what they're going to do. Anything can happen here. So Hyru, it's looking good, but it's a bit of a wild card. 
I would suggest you do some more due diligence considering I didn't cover everything. Go look through the mining information if you have the gall. That's just too much details for me, folks. But maybe it's perfect for you. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.